All right, continuing our discussion about velocity and kinematics, we have to address this topic called radians. Now, I know you've had radians in your other math classes, but it might be wise just to review for a couple minutes so that we can apply it to these problems. Now, as you know, a radian is a, is a central angle measurement, and it's based on the, on the premise that the, the radius of the circle is equal to an arc length. And that then will create a, a kind of standard unit, that, not even a unit, but a standard that we can use for solving engineering problems, especially when we can't use uh, degrees in a problem because it gets complicated. So we can use this radian unit in order to simplify our engineering problems. So basically, when the radius is equal to the arc length, then we can do a couple simple conversions here. Let's say, for instance, if r equals 1 and the circumference is course, as we remember, remember from uh, our previous math courses, is 2 pi r, then I can solve for um, the circumference, or 360 degrees, into rads, and that's... 6.28 rads in one revolution. Now, um, that can also be expressed as 2 pi rads. Now, when I say rads or radians, it's written in a problem RAD, okay? So we don't have to say rads, we just, just or write rads, we just write RAD. That's the expression. Okay, so then, um, we know then what, what kind of measurement this is. And I try to put it on my little diagram. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two, eight. So it's like angular measurements, but it's rads that go around the central angle. Now, if then the arc angle uh, equals 360 degrees, uh, theta over 360 degrees, two pi r, then I can calculate uh, that the, um, the angle then, if I want to convert one rad to angles, one rad is equal to 57.3 degrees. So I'm just converting that for you so that you can, you, you can make some kind of a relationship here. So looking at the circumference then and looking at a specific rad then here. Now finally, if A equals theta r, and that's when theta is in rads, that is also another valuable tool that we can use. You can use this formula here if you understand that theta in this formula is rads. And so then there you, you can solve for r, you can solve for a, any combination of what you can, you can put into this formula. But got to remember, this has got to be in rads. And finally, to write a couple of Things here to put it all together, we have a 6.28 uh, rads is equal to one revolution, which is equal to 360 degrees, which is also equal to two pi rads. So you could see this expression here, um, especially for conversions when we when we want to move from degrees to rads and back and forth. Okay, so that's why the, the this um, rads is important. Now I put on the conversions on the board here for you. If I want to go from degrees to rads, uh, rad equals degrees times the quantity two pi rads over 360 degrees is your conversion right there. And as I had done in the previous time, degrees cancel out degrees. My answer turns out to be rads. Okay. And then conversely, then I like that word. Conversely, we have rads to degrees. Then I take degrees equals rads times 360 degrees over 2 pi rads. Guess what? Here we have rads here and rads here, and the answer comes out in degrees. Simple enough. So you just got to remember what that relationship is between the two and be able to use these conversions to help you. Also, I mean, the 57.3 degrees may help you too. Some people like to go this way as well, but in formulas, these conversions work a lot easier. 
So finally, here's a couple examples. If I want to convert 37 degrees to rads, and then I just write this down, uh, rads equals 37 times the quantity, 2 pi over 360, and there we go, 0.646 rads. And if I want to convert these rads to degrees, 2.88 rads to degrees, then degrees equals 2.88 times quantity 360 divided by 2 pi, it leaves me with 165 degrees. So there you go. This is very important that you understand this concept because our next set of problems are going to be called tangential uh, velocity. Well, it will be very important that we understand this totally before we get there. So I probably give you a couple problems here so that you can um, practice with this concept. All right, well, thank you, and I look forward to the last topic in this module, and that will be tangential uh, velocity. Okay, thank you very much.